I call to order the Lake Havasu City Council regular meeting for Tuesday, July 11, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. We will have an invocation by Chaplain B. Evans from KNLB Christian Radio, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Jenny Toker from ha Hospice of Havasu. This is always such a privilege. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you for a group of people that love Lake Havasu City. We thank you for our council, Lord, because we know, Father, these things that they're bringing up tonight are not a surprise to them, that they've studied them, and they've asked you for wisdom on them, Lord. Your word tells us that if we ask for wisdom, you'll give it to us. So we trust you, Father. We trust you with what's going on tonight. We trust you for what's going on in our wonderful city that we love so much. And we trust you with what's going on in our government because you still sit on the throne and we give you all the praise and the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Good Toker, evening, would Vice you Mayor. tell us a little bit about you? Yes. Um, my name is Jenny Toker. I'm the executive director for Hospice of Havasu. Hospice of Havasu has been serving the Lake Havasu City for 41 years this month. We are proud to announce that we received the prestigious Hospice Honors Elite Award from Healthcare First based on quality scores received from families and patients we served. We remain the only local not-for-profit hospice choice in Lake Havasu City. I'd just like to talk about two amazing programs Hospice of Havasu offers. First is our We Honors Veteran program. We Honor Veterans is a program of the National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization in collaboration with the Department of Veterans Affairs. As a three-star member, we honor our hospice and transition patients with a special recognition ceremony in the presence of family and friends. It's our way of saying thank you for the sacrifices our veterans have made to their service and to their service for the country. The Vietnam Veterans of America Kingman chapter generously provide us with blankets that we wrap around the veterans during our recognition ceremony, along with a presentation that includes a personalized certificate a pinning and a salute. We've been told by some of our veterans this is the only time they've ever been thanked for their service. The next program I want to talk about is our music and memory program. As a certified music and memory care organization, we create individualized playlists for our patients who are experiencing a wide range of cognitive and physical conditions to help them be able to engage in the world, ease pain, and reclaim their humanity through music. Our music and memory trained volunteers interview patients' families and then create a personalized collection of music on a portable device that is given to the patient with a set of headphones for their use. We have a great response from families whose loved ones have benefited from this program. A spouse of one of our dementia patients said it was the first time he had seen his wife smile in years when she puts the, the music and it's listening to her with their headphones. Hospice of Havasu is proud to have been part of this community for so many years. If anyone you know needs or has any questions about hospice services, please remember to call Hospice of Havasu. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate all the hard work you do in helping our families in their, their most time of need. So we appreciate that. All right, Ms. Williams, would you do the roll call, please? Council members, Nancy Campbell. Here. Michelle Lynn. Cameron Moses. Here. Jenny Koch. Here. Jim Dolan. Here. Vice Mayor David Lane. Here. Mayor Cal Sheehy. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. And as you all may have noticed, uh, Mayor Sheehy is here via electronic means and, and not here. He's down in Phoenix handling uh, stuff on behalf of the city. And so he's, uh, he's joining us um, up there. So he's almost larger than life, isn't he? All right. That brings us to our consent agenda. Would anybody like to remove any item uh, from the consent agenda, consent agenda for further discussion? 
Vice Mayor. Uh, Council Member Koch. Motion. Please. Move to accept the consent agenda as presented. All right, we do have a motion from Council Member Koch and a second from Council Member Moses. Any further discussion? Okay, we're ready to vote. Mayor Sheehy? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you. That will now take us to item six, correspondence, communications, petitions, announcement, and the city manager's report. First up is item 6.1, which is the quarterly report that you all received from uh, the community resource quarterly reports. Are there any questions? All right, then that report will be filed as presented. Uh, item 6.2, announce vacancies on Lake Havasu City's boards, committees, and commissions. Ms. Williams? Vice Mayor and Council, there, the city uh, has announced several vacancies on Lake Havasu City boards, committees, and commissions. The following is a listing of those vacancies. Airport Advisory Board, four regular pilot members, one regular non-pilot member, one alternate pilot member, and one alternate non-pilot member. Board of Adjustment, two regular members and two alternate members. And the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, with one student member. Anyone interested can pick up a packet at City Hall, and they are also available on the city's website at lhcaz.gov. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. That will take us to item 6.3, the city manager's report. Mr. Knudsen. Yeah, good evening, uh, Vice Mayor, Mayor, and, and members of the council. I uh, start off this uh, report this evening with a congratulations to Mr. Nathan Adler. We're pleased to announce the promotion of Nathan Adler as the Lake Havasu City's new fire marshal. With over 20 years of experience within the organization, Nathan has consistently demonstrated excellent dedication, leadership, fire suppression, and prevention expertise. His extensive knowledge of fire prevention measures and safety protocols, coupled with his strong commitment to public safety, make him an ideal fit for the position of Lake Havasu City's fire marshal. As a, as a fire marshal, he'll manage the fire prevention and community risk a reduction division and ensure compliance within the city's fire codes and public, public education efforts. Uh, thank you to Nathan. Congratulations to you, and uh, you definitely earned it. Uh, just last week, we have some new members, official members of the Lake Havasu City Police Department, uh, two lateral officers who are Dalton Breakrights and Joseph Benegas were pinned by their family members and received the oath of office along with our four recent Academy graduates, who are officers Jacob Rodriguez, Trent Scanoni, Christopher Madden, and Charles Wachtel. Congratulations to all and welcome to the team. Uh, you might recall, Council, that the fire department received a FEMA assistance firefighter grant for purchasing and installing a turnkey diesel exhaust extraction system for all of our city fire stations. Uh, these pictures depict the completed installation of the exhaust systems, which was done by the contractor, who was Barnes Electric, LLC. The diesel exhaust system will protect the health of employees and the public from hazardous exhaust gases released by fire apparatus when entering and exiting the fire stations. FEMA provided a grant, which totaled uh, $285,200, and the city's contribution was $28,500. Uh, a big uh, thank you to Battalion Chief Car St Carl Stello for managing this project and doing a wonderful job to get us in a good place. And finally, uh, the Lake Havasu City Municipal Airport, we had it closed for about five weeks. We're going to have two more days of closure uh, to that's going to start on tomorrow, which is going to be uh, a Wednesday. And uh, that'll be closed through Friday at uh, hopefully at uh, 5 p.m., if not sooner, for scheduled runway painting. So the, uh, the, the runway is completed, brand new asphalt looking very good, and uh, we need to put some permanent paint down on the runway. It'll take us about uh, two days to complete that. And, uh, and at that point, the airport will be fully operational from the, from, in a, with a brand new runway. Uh, for anybody that has questions about the uh, the closure, uh, please contact the airport at 643-3330. Uh, Vice Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Knudsen. That will now take us to our public hearings, item number seven. During our public hearings, the public will have an opportunity to speak on each of the items. There is a light indicator box uh, up there next to the podium. 
The green light means that you uh, are on. The yellow light means you have one minute to go and the red light means that your time has expired. First up will be 7.1, series number 12, restaurant liquor license for the North Side Grill. Ms. Torres, or Ms. Williams. Thank you. Vice Mayor and City Council, Scott Lee Torres has applied for a Series 12 restaurant liquor license for Northside Grill, located at 5601 Highway 95 North, um, Unit 718. All posting requirements have been met, all fees have been paid, and no objections are received. The location is properly zoned for a restaurant liquor license. I'm happy to answer any questions, and a representative of the application is also here tonight to answer any questions from the Council. Thank you. Do any of the council members have questions for Ms. Williams or the applicant? Did the applicant want to make a statement or anything? Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. This is a public hearing. Would anybody from the public like to get up and speak? Seeing. Just this one item, ma'am. Did you want to speak on this item? Okay, thank you. All right, then seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Bring it back to council for further discussion or a motion. Vice Mayor. Councilmember Moses. I move to recommend that the Arizona Department of Liquor License and Control approve a series 12 restaurant liquor license for the Northside Grill, 5601 Highway 95 North, number 718. Second. All right, we have a motion from Council Member Moses and a second from Council Member Koch. Any further discussion? We are ready to vote. Mayor Sheehy? Aye. <coughs> motion carries six to zero. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Item 7.2, adopt resolution number 23-3690 appointing members to the Lake Havasu City Airport Advisory Board. Ms. Williams. Vice Mayor and City Council, the city received six applications requesting consideration for appointment to the Airport Advisory Board. These appointments are necessary to fill the vacancies of four regular pilot members, one regular non-pilot member, one alternate pilot member, and one alternate non-pilot member. Pilot member. The application review panel conducted interviews for the Airport Advisory Board on July 5th and recommends that Kurt Carlson, Tony Castlefort, Brian Schultz, and Dennis Simonian be appointed as regular members, regular pilot members, sorry, with a term ending June 30th, 2026. Suzanne Strader be appointed as a regular non pilot member with a term ending June 30th, 2026. And Katrin Phillips be reappointed as an alternate non-pilot member with a term ending June 30th, 2026. All six applications were provided to you in the council packet and the applicants were also invited to attend tonight's meeting to answer any questions from the city council. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Williams? All right, we do have some of the applicants here this evening. Uh, Mr. Uh, Simonian cannot be here. Um, Ms. Strader? Would you like to introduce yourself to the council if you're here? Oh, there you are. And if you could please just step up to the microphone and introduce yourself. Good evening. My name is Suzanne Strader. I've been in the community for 10 years. My family uses the airport quite a bit. I'm looking forward to being a part of the airport advisory board. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Strader? All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mr. Carlson, are you here? Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is uh, Kirk Carlson. I originally built a house out here in 1986 and made it the official residence in 2013 after expanding that. Uh, had a uh, uh, pretty good background in uh, aviation, grew up in a flying family, and uh, been an airport bum ever since. Uh, was uh, in the Air Force, uh, flew in the airlines, and also was vice president of flight operations for a company out in New Mexico. Got to do a few things the last five years. Uh, looking forward to, with that background, uh, helping out in expanding the airport, which uh, is very nice. And I have an aircraft that's based out there and have been for about seven years now. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Carlson? All right. Well, thank you, sir. Okay. We thank appreciate you. your time. Mr. Schultz, is he on the phone? I know he was going to try to be here via phone. 
No, he wasn't able to? Okay, thank you. Ms. Phillips? Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Catherine Phillips. I've been in Havasu for five years now. Been in aviation for 23 years. Uh, last five years were in general aviation. 18 years before was commercial aviation airport operations. Uh, I have already served on the airport advisory board as an alternate non-pilot for the last three years, and I would like to renew that for another three at least. Well, thank you. We appreciate you being here. Question? Are there any questions for Ms. Phillips? All right, thank, thank you. you. And Mr. Castlefort, are you here? There you are. Tony Castlefort, it's good to see everybody. Um, international captain on the Gulfstream aircraft, also an FAA examiner on that particular airplane. This will be my second term on the advisory board. I'm looking forward to Continuing on with the plan to build some hangars. I'd like to also continue to work towards maybe someday having commercial air service here again. And um, I'm, well, I'd just like to thank everybody for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Castleport? Well, thank you for being here. All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to speak on behalf of this? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to council for questions or a possible motion. Vice Mayor. Council Member Dolan. Motion. Please. I move to adopt resolution number 23-3690, appointing Dennis Simonian, Kurt Carlson, Brian Schultz, and Tony Castlefort as regular non-pilot members and Suzanne Strader as alternate non-pilot, no, no, as a regular non-pilot member and Katrin Phillips as an alternate non-pilot member to the Lake Havasu City Airport Advisory Board with terms ending June 30th, 2026. Second. All right, we have a motion from Council Member Dolan and a second from Council Member Moses. Any further discussion? We're ready to vote. Mayor Sheehy? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you. That will now take us item 7.3. Introduce ordinance number 23-1313, amending city code chapter 2.56. Ms. Carey. Good evening. During a recent review of the city code, this section was identified as possibly needing some revision or to be repealed from the city code. This particular section, which makes the term of the chief magistrate and his or her assistant commence on March 15th, was adopted in 1985 and hasn't been revised since. It's no longer necessary. The city enters into an agreement with the city magistrate and that agreement sets the term. And so staff is recommending that this section be repealed. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Carey? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone from the public like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to council for discussion or action. Mayor, uh, Vice, Vice Mayor, <laughs> I move to introduce ordinance number 23-1313, amending city code chapter 2.56. Magistrates Court to repeal section 2.56.040, Magistrates Commencement of Terms. Second. All right, we do have a motion from Council Member Moses and a second from Council Member Dolan. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Mayor Sheehy. Hey. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you. Item 7.4, adopt resolution number 23-3688, levying the tax rate at 0 0.6718. Ms. Olson. Good evening, thank you. This evening marks the one of the final acts in order to finish the budget process for fiscal year 24. Um, the first item before you is the adoption of the general fund property tax levy. Um, 
Again, as a reminder, we have not proposed an increase to the tax rate. The rate will stay the same as it was in fiscal year 23. However, the assessed valuation for the city did increase according to the county records. Therefore, the tax levy will be increased and it will generate an additional $359,000 and change um, in total with 88,000 of that being due to new construction. So with that, I'll answer any questions. All right, does anyone have any questions for Ms. Olson? No? I would like to say thank you. It's, it's been a long road once again um, to, to the entire staff. This is the end of a 10-month month, 10 month process. Um, and once again, uh, you guys have brought us a budget that's fully balanced and uh, without any borrowing. So we appreciate that. Thank so, you. This is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address us on this matter? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing and bring it back to council for further discussion or possible action. Vice Mayor. Officer. Council Member Coke. Motion. Please. I move to adopt resolution number 23-3688, adopting the Lake Havasu City property tax levy rate of 0.6718 per $100 of excessed value for fiscal year 2023-24. Second. All right, we do have a motion from Council Member Coke and a second from Council Member Dolan. Any further discussion? We are ready to vote. Mayor Sheehy? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you. That will now bring us to adopt resolution number 23-3689, adopting the property tax levy. Ms. Olson. Thank you again. This is the property tax for the London Bridge Plaza district area. This is um, down in the London Bridge area where the swap meet parking lot is um, in that area. This assessment um, is paid by the property owners in that district. And these dollars are used for the maintenance and operation of that parking lot, um, the lighting system, water surface, water service and landscaping for that area. The rate again is staying the same. It will generate just a, a slightly higher amount um, for next year's revenue. And with that, I'll answer any questions. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Olson? This is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the council on this matter? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to council. Mayor, Vice Mayor. I move to adopt resolution number 23-3689, adopting the Lake Havasu City Improvement District number two, London Bridge Plaza property tax levy rate at 0 .7370 per $100 assessed value for fiscal year 23 through 24. Second. All right. We do have a motion from Council Member Moses and a second from Council Member Dolan. Any further discussion? All right. We are ready to vote. Mayor Sheehy? Aye. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you. Item 7.6, approve Teller Software as a service agreement with Can Am Technologies, Inc. Ms. Ware going to present that or? Yes, thank you. Good evening. Um, the next item is the implementation of a new cash receding system. Um, it's the, f it marks the final stage of replacing HDE. Um, initially, the system will integrate with our new land management system, MainStar, Oracle Accounts Receivable, and also accept other miscellaneous receipts, such as in the police department uh, and other customer service receipts. Uh, this system is capable of interfacing with most of our current software systems. Uh, the new system will eventually um, provide a uniform center for citizens to pay uh, their city bills. 
Um, the first phase of the implementation is projected to be 110,000 uh, with an additional 51,600 required for licensing and hosting. And then each year after, um, years two through five, uh, that'll increase by uh, consumer price index. Um, the funds for the project are budgeted in the fiscal year 2024 general fund. And that's it, unless you have any other questions. Well, this will definitely make it easier for our citizens to be able to uh, work with the city when they have funds that they need to uh, transfer to us. So thank you for that. Are there any questions for Ms. Ware? Seeing none, this is a public hearing. Would anybody from the public like to address the council on this matter? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing and bring it back to council for further discussion or possible action. Vice Mayor, motion. Please. I move to approve the Teller software as a service agreement with the Can Amp Technologies and authorize the city manager to execute the agreement on behalf of the city. Second. All right. We have a motion from Council Member Campbell and a second from Council Member Moses. Any further discussion? We're ready to vote. Mayor Sheehy? Aye. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you. Item 7.7, .7, ratify change order number one to construction contract for the chip drive lift station improvements. Mr. Hart. Good evening, uh, Honorable Vice Mayor and City Council. It's good to be before you this evening. I'm here to present the uh, chip drive lift station uh, rehabilitation ratification change order have a little presentation that I hope you'll find uplifting. This is the <laughs> chip drive lift station. <clears throat> uh, it's, uh, for those that aren't familiar with the project itself, it is actually down on the Lake Havasu Avenue and chip drive intersection right here in this conveniently located uh, spot. The chip drive lift station project itself uh, was originally constructed in 1996. Uh, the lift station's various pieces of equipment needed needed upgrading. Um, City Council, as you may or may not remember, a whole year ago, you awarded the construction contract to Schofield Civil uh, Construction on July 12th. <clears throat> the uh, after a long materials delay, which involved a, a pre-con in September, in which they told me they wouldn't be able to start in September of 24 and I accused them of having a typo, but they said no. And, but we were able to work with them and, and get the uh, equipment that we've been utilizing on a, on a recent electrical uh, projects that work quite well that are acceptable. So we were able to move it up to May, so we started here in May. Um, this ratification, uh, it deals with two items. The first is a, a key component of this project is being able to bypass the lift station. As you can imagine, uh, the various material flowing through our sewer system. It goes to this lift station and is pumped out, uh, lifted up to our Mulberry wastewater treatment plant. So we had to be able to, to bypass the lift station. And we uh, set up, as, as originally we set up two uh, generators with pumps. And uh, it was determined once we, we started that, uh, that the design flow or, or the actual flows that were out there were more than, than what we had anticipated. Um, part of that we're thinking maybe it has to do with the new hotel that was, that was put in there and had started up, et cetera. So we had to bring in a, an additional pump so that we could continue on with, with, with pumping that material around the, the station with, with a little effort. Um, then as we got into the wet well evaluation, which, uh, Prior to setting up the bypass system, you know, we have our, our sewer lines set up such that it flowed into this wet well, which was, which is 10 feet in diameter and 20 feet deep. So it had been functioning quite well for many, many years. Uh, we put in our bid item that we would do some touch up possibly to it with some of the coating. But once we actually got in there and started looking at it, we realized that it needed some some serious work and, and what better time to do it than now. So I will like to say the project is on schedule to be completed the beginning of next week. 
This is the bypass system that I was talking about. The two pumps on the left were the original pumps. We had to, to order the third generator pump system to take care of the, the additional flows that we were seeing there. This here is our wet well inspection. On the left, you'll see a gentleman that's got quite a long ladder and he's hooked up, of course, to a harness system going through and, and looking in detail at uh, the various uh, conditions of the wall. Um, overall, and, I mean, it served its purpose. It's, it's done well, but it, it needs uh, addressing. They told us if we were not to move forward with this, we'd be looking at replacing it in five years. So by, by moving forward with the coating that we did, uh, we extended at least another 20 years. And on the right there is actually the wet well after it was, was coated and redone with the brackets beginning to go back into it. I do want to note, too, as we talked about, part of this project involved upgrading the electrical system. So on the left is the uh, old original electrical panels. We now have the new electrical panels uh, with a nice shade, and it's turning out to be a really nice improvement. <clears throat> the ratification itself, as you, as you see, is for an additional um, $83,767 to cover that cost. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Hurt? Seeing none, this is a public hearing. Would anybody from the public like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and thank you for your work. We appreciate all the hard work you're doing out there. It's been a lot of road closures in that area and lane restrictions, so it'll be good to get that behind us. Yes, and uh, we'd like to thank the police department for uh, responding quite quickly to requests to have a deputy sit out there because we did have uh, vehicles that seemed to ignore the speed limit and to their detriment hit the nice trench covering, but um, they were able to respond quite quickly and help us out. So thank them. All right, thank you. Well, with that, I'll bring it back to the council for a possible motion. Vice Mayor. Council Member Dolan. Motion. Please. I move to ratify change order number one to construction contract for the chip drive lift station improvements project with Schofield Civil Construction LLC in the amount of $83,767 to a total contract number of $1,099,267 and no cents. Second. All right. We do have a motion from Council Member Dolan and a second from Council Member Koch. Any further discussion? We are ready to vote. Mayor Sheehy? Aye. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you. That takes us to our final public hearing of the night. Item 7.8, approve the professional services agreement with NCS engineers to prepare a North Regional Wastewater Subarea Facilities and Modeling Assessment. Mr. Thiel. Um, so this evening we're here to order professional services agreement. You need a pair? <laughs> I'm going to stumble through this. My glasses just broke. You want to borrow mine? You can borrow mine. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> See if they'll work. Just like sit back. <laughs> just save, just save my night. Thank you. You do realize that means you have old man eyes. <laughs> there you go. Watch yourself. Can you run the Thank you for the humor. Okay. So tonight we're here to award a professional services agreement to prep to prepare a North Regional wastewater sub area facilities and modeling assessment. And I must say, you're definitely older than I am. <laughs> Bear with me. In 2022, the city received the updated wastewater master plan recommending improvements to the wastewater system in order to maximize the existing lift stations and wastewater treatment plants. 
and this is common for any agency. We kind of go through this, you know, every five years just to assess our sewer system and, you know, make sure we're keeping up on improvements. And um, so during the development of the master plan, it was anticipated that growth would occur in the northern area of Lake Havasu City. So this map shows sort of the area. Um, you can see right by the airport up here in the middle right um, where we've received you know, requests for um, additional services, um, you know, and just anticipating development in general. And then, so due to the anticipated growth, we requested the preparation of a sub area plan to be developed. The goal of the plan was to maximize gravity flows and provide for lift station optimization, as well as a new lift station that will connect to the influent pump station, which is like right in here that connects to the North Regional Plant. And then on uh, last month, uh, council approved a planned development rezone of 44.42 acres of land to be developed into a residential manufactured home community known as Victoria Farms. So, you know, we had this coming through, so we re requested a scope of work and fee proposal uh, to have NCS engineers perform professional engineering services infrastructure siting and hydraulic modeling in order to accommodate the future developments. This work will also assist current septic system users to connect to the sanitary sewer system. So the contract services include site investigation and base mapping for the new lift station. So we're still trying to figure out where the best spot is to put that lift station. Hydraulic modeling of the existing and future collection system whether that's, you know, force mains, gravity mains, how, you know, how we're going to make all that work. And then optimization of the existing lift stations that we currently have on the east side of Highway 95 to see if we can maybe take a couple of those offline, combine systems in order to optimize our flows. And with that, I'll take any questions. All right. Are there any questions? One of the things I would like to bring up, because um, I did receive an email on this, and so there was some confusion on why the new developments aren't paying for it. Bless you. And the fact of the matter is the new developments will be paying for any work that needs to be done, but this is how we're going to figure out how much they have to pay. So um, it'll be very important for that. So, all right. Any other comments, questions? All right. This is a public hearing. Would anybody from the public like to address the council on this matter. On this matter, you, if you would like to step up to the microphone, you may. Is it, are you wanting, I know you had told me you wanted to talk on um, call to the public. Did you want to talk on this particular item? No, I'm sorry. Okay, no, that's okay. I just, <laughs> that's okay. All right, then seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the council for possible action. Vice Mayor. Councilmember Pope. Motion. Please. I move to approve the professional services agreement when, with NCS engineers to prepare a North Regional Wastewater Sub Area Facilities and Modeling Assessment in the amount of $88,420. Second. All right. We do have a motion from Councilmember Coke and a second from Councilmember Moses. Any further discussion? We're ready to vote. Mayor Sheehy. Aye. Motion carries six to zero. Oh, I can see. <laughs> All right. That will take us to item number eight, which is our call to the public. We'll now have the open call to the public for citizens wishing to address the council on issues within the jurisdiction of the city. Your comments must be limited to three minutes or less. If you wish to address the council, um, you may do so. There is a light indicator box, as I mentioned earlier, where uh, the green light means that you have your time. Yellow light means you have one minute to go. The red light means that you are done. Um, you may sign up for the call to the public. We didn't have anyone sign up, but we do have some people here that would like to speak at call to the public. So if you would like to speak at call to the public, now would be the time to 
step up to the microphone. Please state your name clearly so the uh, city clerk can get it down for the record and give us your thoughts. Hello, my name is Karen Grant. I'm visiting Lake Havasu City from Denver, Colorado, and I'm here on behalf of my brother, Jeffrey Cowan. Jeffrey is moving away from Lake Havasu City, and he's out of town right now, but he did want to express his great thanks to the council, to the Lake Havasu Police Department and Fire Department for helping him in times of need, and he's just very grateful for all the services that he's received here. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much for your comments. Would anyone else like to address the council? Good evening, council, vice mayor, uh, Don Wisdom. Is there any update on ALO? What's going on in the city? With putting in the new fiber system? You're not supposed to talk, I understand, but you can. Blink your eyes and say yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you get? Allo is cur <laughs> cannot have a discussion, but Allo is currently working in the city, and there are some residents that are live now. Would anyone else like to address the council of the call to the public? Seeing none, I'll close the call to the public. Current events. Are there any council committee reports? Vice Mayor. Council Member Campbell. I would like to announce that Arizona at Work, I was in a workforce summit uh, a couple weeks back and we were really excited. There was a governance board there and we had, for the first time in Arizona is going, rural Arizona is going to see more funding dumped into um, apprenticeship programs, uh, trades, and it's a real positive direction. They've been working on this for about two years, so we're actually seeing the funding and the direction that they wanted us to go. And again, trade schools are really a big deal. Uh, we have an additional $4 million that's going into Kingman to help even with some trade show, uh, trades there as well. And I've been asked as an Arizona at Works board member for La Paz County and Mojave County to uh, throw an event, which will be at uh, on August 9th, at 2 p.m., um, it will be at the college, 1977 West Tacoma Boulevard, room 600. Um, the, we asked you to RSVP to Arizona at Work. You can reach out to me as well at campbelln at az.gov. I mean, lhcaz.gov. Or you can reach out to Rachel Thomas at Arizona at Work and uh, do an RSVP. So again, it's from... Um, August 9th at 2 p.m. at the college. And what we plan on doing is to have an open discussion with you to find out what we can do to help your businesses, number one, recruit people. Number two, maybe you have an employee that needs tools. Number three, maybe you have somebody that needs some rent assistance because we're recruiting you from out of the state. The technology that Arizona at Works uh, through the collaboration of Mojave County has, um, let's just say it's DES on steroids. And the exciting thing about that is Mojave County alone had 3,100 hits requesting um, jobs in Mojave County in one month. So what we need to do, it's kind of like match.com. We need to get these people in the jobs that we so desperately need. So this is new conversations. Very excited for Mojave County. If you're interested or you know somebody, please reach out to me or um, Arizona at Works and please join us in this conversation. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other reports? All right. Item 10, future meetings. Tuesday, July the 25th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. will be a regular meeting right here. And then on Tuesday, August 8th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m., we will also have a regular meeting here in this room. Are there any future discussion items? All right. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, we are adjourned. Be safe and stay cool. Hydrate. <laughs>